Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. There's one key aspect that I think can really unlock your understanding of domain-driven design. It's the ubiquitous language. It's the secret sauce. Here's some different ways of thinking about it that I think might be able to give you a big aha moment. So the first tip is to be acutely aware of the terminology and words being used and the language being used in any part of the organization. And that's because words have different meanings given the context. And that's an indicator to you where some boundaries might lie, which is really what you're trying to define. So if we're talking about sales being a boundary, a subdomain, and you can even think of this, it doesn't line up exactly as departments within an organization, but you can think of there's different departments. If you're talking to different people in different departments, they may say the same word, but don't mean the same thing. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Words have meaning within a context. Before I give an example of that, I'd like to thank EventStore for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. If you go into a transportation company and go to their compliance department and ask somebody about a truck, they're gonna be concerned about, guess what? Things related to compliance, like insurance. If you then go to their operations department and ask about that exact same truck, they're gonna be concerned about different things, like where is the position, the location of that truck? Is it on its way to a delivery? Can I use it for another shipment that I have? They're concerned about very different things. Words matter in a given context because they mean different things. When a politician greets you with, how are you? And a nurse greets you with, how are you? They are totally different questions, even though they sound and are spelled the same. Understanding the difference in language and how that applies within a given context, that's actually the secret sauce of what's gonna start forming your ubiquitous language and understand where boundaries actually lie. The second tip is to be aware of concepts. Sure, everybody's familiar with thinking about entities, value objects, those are great, but also about various concepts. Oftentimes, business rules, business processes actually have concrete names of what they're actually calling them. Be very aware if it's not just some conditional statement, it's actually oftentimes some type of policy where if certain conditions exist, then maybe that you have to apply something. But those oftentimes actually have names. That means that if we're capturing all these concepts in the terminology that we're agreeing upon with people in that domain for that bounded context, that means that we're naming things like our commands, events, queries, policies, entities, value objects, processes. These are all technical ways for us to manage and kind of relate to code of these various concepts. It's not worried about factories, facades, all these other things. We're naming how we're modeling this exactly the way we would be talking with it uh, to somebody in the business, in the domain. So it's very easy to translate and find code when you're thinking about, okay, for example, when transportation, I need to go look at how something's dispatched. That's a command. If I need something that's deriving from that, when an, uh, an order was dispatched, that's an event. It's very easy to navigate because your terminology of what you're talking, your terminology and code is a one-to-one. -one. I'd love to know in the comments if the code and structure is very reflective of the language being used within a context, or do you really have to dig through it to make any sense of what it's actually doing? Tip number three is being careful about talking to people that wear many different hats. You're in a small organization or a big organization, and they're aware of everything. And they live kind of all over the place and have a bigger overview. And that's a problem, or it can be just very difficult because then you're trying to figure out what context am I in? Am I talking about this or am I talking about that? Because they can just shift so easily between contexts. It's all about discovery. It's like walking into a dark room and all you have is a flashlight. You have to point it everywhere to all corners to really get the lay of the land to build context. That's why things like event storming are popular for this reason. Because all that discovery is ultimately building out your ubiquitous language. And through that, you're also building out your bounded context. Bonus tip on the complete opposite side of this is not doing discovery because you have a lot of legacy. Be aware that legacy can maybe guide you down necessarily the wrong path of what you don't wanna be in. So there's certain terminology and things that you're using that are there and you understand them because of the legacy system or processes that you have and not necessarily what you wanna to move towards. Now, when building out your ubiquitous language, building out your boundaries, you also need to think about, am I doing a project or a product? Or another way of thinking of it is, am I internal within a single organization or I'm a SaaS provider and I'm gonna be selling this to many different companies? 
because the all may be still in the same domain, that same vertical, but they all likely do things very slightly differently, and that's kind of where their competitive advantage is. They also might not exactly use the same terms for things. And that's because there's just a lot of interchangeable words. People mean the exact same thing, literally, but sometimes it's just geographical. I would call this pop. Other people would call it soda. We're talking about the same thing. If you focus on concepts, the terminology and the language being used within a given context and how that differs from another context, that's what how you'll build out your ubiquitous language for that particular boundary. That's where it has its value. That's where how you're going to be able to define what the different boundaries are. And it magically just doesn't end. You constantly have to pay attention to the terminology being used, the language being used within that given context. Is it in sync with our actual code? Does our code really reflect what we've defined as our ubiquitous language? It can evolve, it can change. It's what you're agreeing upon. I'm hoping this video maybe gave you an aha moment, as well as if you watch any of my other videos, you can start to realize why I harp on crud so much because it is the exact opposite of everything I'm describing. I'd love to know in the comments your thoughts, what your big aha moments, how you think about language. Let me know in the comments, get in there. If you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design, domain-driven design, event sourcing, EDA, those type of topics, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.